Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we're going to be reviewing my newest custom, which is a Scarlet Spider Marvel Legends figure. And my cat is making an appearance, apparently. He hasn't shown up in one of these for a long time. Let's get him out of here. Come on. Okay, so here he is, Mar my Marvel Legends Scarlet Spider. Similar to past ones that I've made, I've made a few now. This one is a little bit different in a few different ways. Some different details on the belt. Uh, the lower half is pretty much all the same, the legs and everything. We went with the uh, face-off Daredevil body. We decided to just leave the straps on there because they look kind of cool. And it's a pain in the butt to take them off, so why not just leave them? He's got the web shooters on the wrists, the accurate comic accurate belt. He has the spider logo on his chest. This time, my customer did not want removable interchangeable hoods, so we have just the sculpted hood, and we have the spider logo on the back. He wanted that on there, so I said it's easier to do without the interchangeable hoods anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. So we did that. Those are particularly fun to paint. I like painting the detailed type of stuff. That's okay. The thing that was really not fun was the black lines around the eyes. That was a lot less fun, but it wasn't too, too bad, so that's okay. Anyway, so it's the face-off Daredevil body, obviously. We didn't do too much to the body other than sculpting the jacket. Now my cat's trying to lay on me while I'm doing this. Okay. Alright, so we I sculpted the jacket, the hoodie, that kind of thing, the tattered sleeves. My customer wanted the sleeves to be kind of uniform, I mean balanced on both sides but not to look like they weren't actually torn up and uneven. So if you'll notice, they kind of, they're balanced, but the tears are not symmetrical. And what I did on this one was I made the tears under the armpit go mostly straight down, which is fairly uh, realistic anyway, and that allows for the arms to go all the way down articulation-wise, so that's good. I think, um, I don't think I did that in the past. I don't know why I didn't, but this one's a little bit better. Of course, the articulation for the ab crunch was sculpted over but he still maintains full posability and that's important for Spider-Man. Speaking of posability for Spider-Man, this face off Daredevil body, though it's a little wrinkly probably for most people's taste, it is great for posability. The ankles have just loads of articulation, the rockers are great, the whole ankle is just a really great joint, the hips are great, there's huge range of motion there really not too much to complain about. And then also for this guy sculpted new heads we have the standard head right here and then we also have the alternate head with the more angular shaped eyes and those just interchange by magnets so there's a screw there to replace the neck peg and then I put a magnet in the head and the cool thing about using the magnets at least in this case, and there's the cat, hey buddy he's actually a better background than the than the paper so we'll just let him stay, hey 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 it's, unless he starts to attack Spider-Man's head. Okay, so, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the head, so the magnet. So other than being good for interchangeability, it, oh my goodness, you're breaking everything. All right, so aside from the interchangeability, the magnet also allows for the head to have extra poseability. So of course the neck joint still works like normal. You know, the disc goes back and forth and that is used for the head, obviously. It can bring the head up and down and do whatever you want. And the way I sculpted the head, you can see that it's not quite flush with the neck, but that is so that you can bring the head up. And it obviously doesn't look the best when it's like this because of that little ledge, but for Spider-Man it's important to look all the way up. Anyway, back to the magnet. Using the magnet, I'm able to hollow out the head more and give him a lot better range of motion on the neck. And this is without moving the neck disc at all. He's got full range of motion without even moving that. So in conjunction with moving the neck disc, you can move the head pretty much however you want. And for Spider-Man, I think any extra posability is always a good thing. So you can really get some nice character posing out of this guy. Uh, you can see on this head the eyes have a gray rim around them to work kind of like the shading that they do for that style eye. This set of eyes does not have that shading. Uh, that was by choice. I didn't just forget. So that pretty much covers all the standard bits on this guy. I added the straps with the boots or with the belts down there. But there's one last little feature. This customer wanted the uh, the hoodie strings like I did on one of my previous ones. But this time, as a little bonus, I made them posable too. So if you have Spider-Man hanging to a, to the side or something, you can move the strings to the side. Or you can just split them up and let them go like that. Or I mean, obviously there's not a whole lot to do with just hoodie strings, but Anytime I can add a little bit of a bonus like that, I did. This Spider-Man does not have any holes in him for 
uh, display stands because my customer wants to use the Bandai style display stands. If you guys aren't familiar with those, check them out. I have them in my D Arts SH Figure Arts video playlist, I think. They might be in the other videos playlist also, but either way, they're in one of those, so check that out. They're really good display stands, and you can check that out in the pictures of Spider-Man as well, because I'll be using that kind of display stand for posing him, since that's what the customer is going to be using. So there it is, guys. There's my newest Scarlet Spider, probably my favorite version. I really liked doing the flat eyes instead of the sculpted ones like I normally do. And um, and I like the, I don't know why, but the posable hoodie strings, when that idea came to me, it was really... Uh, exciting. I don't know why, it was just a little stupid thing like hoodie strings, but that kind of thing, you don't see that often, so I was happy to put that on there for the customer. I don't think he knows yet, so I'm curious to see how he responds. But either way, guys, there it is. Thanks for watching. Let me show you real quick. I don't think I did this because I got distracted by the cat. Just in case you're curious, he stands six and a half inches tall, so standard Marvel Legends scale, full posability. There it is. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting. In order to give Spider-Man his true Spidey ability, I put six magnets in each of his feet. He can hold, uh, the magnets together can hold about three or four pounds. I think it's like 3.6 pounds. So it'll hold the Spider-Man figure no problem at all. Any sort of metal surface, as long as it's magnetic, he can stick to it perfectly sideways, upside down, whatever you want to do. I tested him out on all kinds of things, no problem at all. Technically, he can hang by one foot if you really wanted him to, but of course, that's a little bit risky just in case somebody bumps him or something. We don't want to take have a custom figure take a dive like that. So you have to be a little careful, but technically, his feet can hold plenty of weight so he can hang anywhere you want him to hang.